Hello. What a day, what a day. I'm getting my hair cut on Monday and I'm gonna get some of this butchered off. It is like so long and poofy at this point. I'm in this neighborhood. I was listening to my audiobook. I need to turn around. What a day, what a day. What a day in May. <laughs> That's not a song. How are you guys doing today? It is your Saturday. Are you having a good Saturday? Um, I'm waiting for a phone call, so I may have to get off here in just a second. But I had a great day today. Um, I got up and I had a meeting from two to four. Finalized a project, it went really well. And then I came home, took a shower, and made my videos, and started getting them ready. Fed the dogs. And then um, Alex came home. And Friday nights kind of like turned into our night to watch TV shows. So we were gonna get some food, and he was like, well, what do you want? And so I was like, I wanna go to Whole Foods. So we went to Whole Foods, and I got um, a Caprizi sal sandwich which is just like this ciabatta bread and like tomatoes and uh, mozzarella on it. And then um, I got orzo salad and he got four pieces of pizza. <laughs> I really wanted pizza, but I knew I would just feel gross later. And then I got um, a piece of this like almond. There was like, they had all these desserts there at Whole Foods. Whole Foods is so expensive, um, but it was cheaper than if we had gone out to dinner, so. And it was kind of fun sitting there eating our, our food, watching our show. It was like we had a little picnic tonight in the living room. But anyway, and then I got this dessert. It was like this almond cake. Okay, I am like blown away by this. I don't know, this will be like no surprise to you guys, but I love carrot cake, right? My favorite is pecan pie, but I love carrot cake. And so I'm reading like the calories on things and it's like, I just was blown away. It's like, they had like a chocolate cake there that was like 220 calories. The one I got was like the least amount of calories. And um, they had like a chocolate cake that was like 220 calories, 240 calories or something. But then a piece of carrot cake, vegan carrot cake was 940 calories. <coughs> I don't know why that surprised me. I mean, I guess I'm, it's just stupid to think that just because it's carrot cake, that it would be, you know, low fat and less calories, but anyway, that was my mystifying moment of the day. And uh, let's see what else I did say. Oh, so then we watched RuPaul's Drag Race, which I won't spoil for anybody, it was good. And then we watched uh, Project Runaway All-Stars last night. Ooh, after I did my vlog, I went home and I finished Grace and Frankie. Finally, I did not like how this season ended. I thought it was sad. But I love that show. And, um, oh, I went and picked up Tanya today earlier, too. Like, in the afternoon at, like, 5. I took her to get a fountain coke and we drove around for a second. And, uh, we might go tomorrow to this 12-step convention, state convention, to hear this person speak that we both want to hear speak. So we may be doing that tomorrow night. If I do that, then she'll be in part of my vlog. I'll make her be in a little bit of the vlog. Um, but I don't know if we're going to do that or not. And then, because um, I had wanted to do a really long live stream tomorrow night. But then I'm like, I never get to do stuff like this with Tanya. So I may, because she's always so busy. So I may go do that with her. Because Alex has plans to go to this birthday party tomorrow night. Um, so... Yeah, so then we watched that, and then I did a live stream for an hour, and then Alex um, watched Vanderpump Rules, and then he went to bed. Our washer and dryer is coming in the morning, so by the time that you're watching this, we will have a washer and dryer, because they're coming between eight and noon. I'm so excited. I told Alex, I said, I think I'm gonna let you take the lead on this washer and dryer thing. He was like, okay. <laughs> I should have given them his number, not mine. They have my number, which means I'm gonna have to like get up super early. I mean, I have to get up super early anyway to help with the dogs and everything, but I'm hoping they come closer. Well, if they come at eight, we can just get it done and go back to bed. So there's two ways to look at it. You know, it's like speech class. 
I learned too late in life that in speech, if you're young and you're watching this, listen to what I'm saying. Always give your speech first. Give your speech as close to the beginning as you can because then you just get to sit there for the rest of the two weeks while everybody's giving their speeches and just listen. And then you're done and you don't have to worry and stress out about it. So, it's always good to go first and get stuff done. So if they come at eight o'clock in the morning, that actually wouldn't be bad because then that means that we could just go back to bed. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, but I do want to get my videos. If I get my videos done early tomorrow, then I can um, maybe do a live stream tomorrow and then go to the convention with Tanya. Well, I mean, I can go either way. So I'll probably just go with her because it'll be fun. But it's like a two hour drive to get to where this state convention is. Oh my lord. So Alex just went to bed with all the dogs. I came out to listen to my audiobook for just a little bit. I'm listening to the chalk man. I don't really love it. It's just not that great. I don't know that I would recommend it. Right now I would I mean it's like intriguing enough that I want to find out what happens, but I definitely would give it like a three star. It's just not that good. And I feel like I'm being very generous by giving it three stars. Um, I got kind of spooked today, like telling that Herb Baumeister story and I watched it back and I don't know why it like freaked me out more. If you guys don't know what I'm talking about, on my main channel, I did the whole Herb Baumeister story and talked all about that because I've been getting a lot of comments lately from people that watch my main channel and they'll be like, oh, you mentioned like, doing this paranormal investigation or where did you talk about that and whatever and I realized that I had never like followed up on my main channel and done like a video about like oh yeah we went and did this paranormal investigation so I made a whole video about that it was 30 minutes long it was super long my camera at the end even like stopped we know we know how that works in the vlog right but it had stopped and so then I had to go in and like edit the end into it and it looks just so botched but I did the best I could you guys know I don't edit so anyway um but yeah It was a good day. It's raining right now. It's 43 degrees, but it's nice outside. Kind of, it feels like spring. And uh, I'm gonna listen to my audiobook when I get done here. It's early. It's one-ish. And then I want to be in bed. I mean, no matter what time they come tomorrow, I can't imagine it'll take more than an hour. So no matter what time they come, I'm going back to bed for a little bit. Saturdays and Sundays are our days to sleep in. Somebody commented on my video the other day and they said you always get up in the late afternoon. That's not true, actually. <laughs> I don't know, like maybe I like give out the wrong impression of like what my life looks like sometimes, but I always get up in the morning with Alex and you know, take the dogs out and stuff. And a lot of times I move my car. So I'm usually up for a little bit in the morning, you know, and then I go back to bed. on my book a little bit today and uh, I didn't read today at all though I wanted to do that and I didn't get a read at all today I'm really ready for spring I'm really ready for nice weather and uh, sunny days flooding everywhere in Indianapolis right now. Like on the side of the road and stuff. It's like, you can see it, it's real bad. I feel like there was something I wanted to tell you guys. There's like a story. Well, I've been thinking, like so many people have been asking me for paranormal stories. And I have like stories that are like, I don't know how like great of a story they are. You know, like I have a paranormal story that happened to me when Alex was gone one night. And I'll probably tell that, but it's kind of a very funny story. But I believe, like, truly that it, like, meant something. And then I have a funny, it's not really a funny, I mean, it, it's kind of weird looking back on it, aliens, the UFO story that happened. Um, they're funny and looking back, isn't it weird how, like, sometimes the stories, like, looking back on them, they're funnier, like, when you look back on them but like they weren't funny at the time. You know what I mean? Like, definitely that like the UFO story was funny. This car is like 
I am going like the speed limit and this car is like barreling into me. And it's like, okay. <clears throat> I'm ready to read whatever my next book is gonna be though. I just bought my two Audible credit. Well, I had two credits I just got and I used them. I used them for the Shadow of the Wind one because I'm gonna do that even though I bought the book. I don't know why, it was a waste of money. I thought I would read the book, but then I, it just was so long. I was like, I'm just gonna listen to it on Audible. Um, I'm doing a Buddy Reads with Damien Terrakez on my booktube channel. We're supposed to have it done by the middle of March. And then I bought, um, oh, I can't think of what his name is. Ken somebody, he wrote Crazy Rich Asians. It's supposed to be an incredible book. Do you guys know what I'm talking about? It's gotten like, I mean, it's a couple years old, but it's gotten, and he has a sequel out to it now. Um, it has gotten such rave reviews from people that are just like, I've had so many people tell me that it's such a great book. So I'm gonna read that. And then, why is this person like writing my ass? I'm turning, go around me. That was spooky. Um, I see there's like flooding on either side of the road. When I drove by the deer area tonight when I was listening to my book, there were like six deer there and they were running like all over the field. Like they were, it reminded me of like reindeer games, you know, with like Santa Claus. <sighs> Alex and I kind of planned our weekend. We're gonna go to brunch on Sunday and just kind of hang out. I thought the Oscars were this weekend, but I'm wrong. They're next weekend. So that was stupid. Excuse me that I thought that. Oh well. <laughs> it kind of works out better for me anyway because I wanted to do a long live stream one night this weekend. And so I think I'll do it on Sunday night if I go to uh, the thing on, if I go to the thing on, uh, what was I gonna say? With Tanya. I was thinking here, you know, it's a funny story. This is not really a funny story, but, so I did a video on my main channel, or on my Peterisms channel tonight, talking about my high school reunion. So if you haven't seen it, go check it out. And um, I was thinking about, like, so I didn't, they had a 25th reunion, and I didn't go to that. And I had planned to, and I, I even bought tickets to go, and, um, and I heard it was a blast, and people had a really good time, and, you know, it's really interesting that I'm like so invested in going to these reunions now when in high school, like I I was the person that said, I will never go to a high school reunion. I hate, the, I hated high school, I will never go to a reunion. And now I'm like real invested in going to the reunions and stuff, you know? And uh, so I was supposed to go to the 25th with my friend Jenny and um, there was a bunch of other people that we knew that were going. And a lot of my friends that were flying into town to go and stuff. And uh, some of you out there will understand what I'm about to say. And some of you will think it's a shit move. So I apologize for the shit move in advance. <laughs> but it was my birthday weekend. And it was... Um, so my friend Courtney, who was... She was a Miss Indiana USA... She's real involved in pageants, and uh, she coaches for pageants and stuff. Well, she does a lot of judging, and she was judging this glitz pageant. Now, if you don't know what glitz is, glitz is like the girls that are like, and they have like the fake teeth in and the hair done. They look like, you know, it's like John Benet Ramsey. And um, I had always wanted to go to a glitz pageant. Well. This pageant was really unique because it was half natural, half glitz. So day one was all natural. Like the interviews were all natural. Pers we did personality was all natural. The talent was all natural. And then the second day, which was full glitz, um, was like evening gown. And then they had like four different categories and then four different ages too. It was So anyway, I really, she called me and she said, the last minute and she was like, it was like the day before I was supposed to go to my high school reunion and she was like, do you want to do this pageant? She was like, I know how interested you're do you are into doing this. They need another judge. 
Um, they'll pay you a certain amount of money. It was like a, a lot of money too that I got paid to do it. And then she was like, and they'll put you in a hotel for the two nights. You'll be at the hotel um, where the pageant is. And I was like, are you kidding me? Alex and I have judged a lot of pageants. Um, I, and it's like my dream to judge pageants. Like I, I would do every pageant I was ever asked to uh, judge. I've done a lot, mostly scholarship pageants. I've never ever gone to a pageant this whole fixation and idea that, uh, like, uh, little kid beauty pageants are like the mom in the back row, like that whole toddlers and tiaras thing is kind of of yesteryear. You don't really see that anymore at like baby beauty pageants. You just don't. Like the parents, it's usually they come as a family, like mom, dad, and like the other kids. And it's like a family weekend and you don't ever see any of that like bad behavior from parents. You don't see kids drinking like sh sugar or eating sugar and drinking like their, you know, gaga juice. You don't see, I, I, I've never witnessed that. But a lot of the pageants that Alex and I have judged are typically either like, they're like girls in college and they're like scholarship pageants. Um, and so anyway, but this, she was asking specifically just me if I wanted to do it. And um, so Alex was gonna go too, but I can't remember, something came up and he couldn't go that weekend. So he was gonna stay, he was like, just go, you'll have fun, you've always wanted to do this. I was so excited. So um, it was in St. Louis. I had to drive five hours to go. And um, oh, I know what it was. It was Tanya was full, and I couldn't get the dogs in the kennel that weekend. So Alex, he had to stay at home with the dogs. So he was like, "Babe, just go. You'll have fun." So I went, and um, I remember I went to Target and I bought like all these like button-down like plaid shirts, and I wanted to look like fun professional, you know? I was real excited about it. I was so excited about it. I listened to an audiobook, like Scary Mystery on the Way Over There. So I check in this hotel, I get there, Courtney met me, check in this hotel, and the hotel is like, it was like, oh, I don't know, like a Renaissance or like a Marriott Courtyard. It was really a nice hotel, like, and I've stayed in some really nice hotels, but I thought it would be like bullshit hotel. Oh my God, that stupid yellow battery light is on. I thought it would be like a, like a bullshit hotel, but I mean, for like a mid-range hotel, it was really pretty nice. And um, so I got there and then I had to like immediately start working. So we go downstairs. I don't know when this is gonna cut off. Whenever it cuts off because of the battery, I will just come back on and I'll let it cool down and I'll come back on. But anyway, so I checked in and then Courtney was already there. And so she came and got me, and uh, I had to get dressed to go right away. So I like changed and put on something nice, and then we went, and that was at like, I got there at like noon. And so this was like at one when the pageant started on like, I stayed there Friday and Saturday. No, this was like, like five on Friday. I got there, and they did like this, um, what do you call it, this, uh, tour of like all the contestants and it was so hilarious. So like there's like, you know, categories of like zero to 18 months. So like these mothers and grandmothers like walk them out and stuff. It's kind of adorable, honestly. And um, I'm like, I said to Cor I'm like, Courtney and this other woman are like teaching me how to score. And I'm like, how do you score it? And they're like, well, I mean, it's really hard to score like, you know, a, a three month old, but like if the outfit's cute or something like that, you know? So, and then it went all the way up to 18 year old girls. And um, these 18 year old girls, you could tell like had been friends together. It was real sisterly. It was just really neat. Like you could tell. And one of the things I liked about this pageant was, I mean, obviously they had the winner. And let me just tell you, she was like a winner. This girl that won like everything, who was like 18, she had gotten like a full ride scholarship to some college. She like sang, she was gorgeous. Um, she had a 4-0. Her personality was so on point. I mean, it just was like, I mean, when we interviewed her, I just was like, oh my God, this girl could like get a job in New York City tomorrow and make $200,000. I mean, she just was so personable and such a neat family. Oh, one of the parts of this uh, pageant was that you interviewed the people with their family, like a family member, which I really liked. It was a very wholesome pageant. And, um, but it was so funny because like Courtney and I would walk around the halls of the hotel like going, like they had a restaurant and a bar there, so we would like go and 
neither one of us drank, so we would sit there and get like a Coke and just like talk in the bar or whatever while we were waiting for like the other judges to go to dinner. The first night we all, the first and second night we all went to dinner like off like the hotel, like we went to some place, I can't remember where we went A, but it was just like, you know, some kind of just normal restaurant, Applebee's, something like that. It wasn't an Applebee's, but it was something like that. Bennigan's or something, you know. <laughs> and, um, oh, just stop. Okay, let's try this again and shut off. I don't know why it shut off. I don't even have the heat on. Um, I don't know if I did, but I turned it off. So anyway, so Courtney and I were like walking around the hotel and like the kids would stop. They go, judges, there's the judges. It was so cute. And um, like the parents would be like, if you want their autograph, they'll give it, give you their autograph. And Courtney was like, so I did it like this, like one little girl came up to me, these two little girls came up to me and they were like, can we get your autograph? And I was like, yeah. And I get like, they didn't even know what my name was. It was so funny. And Courtney, like, she was real serious. She's like, we're not supposed to talk to the contestants. And I'm like, okay. So anyway, it was so funny though. Like, I mean, it, it's not like I was an expert judge, you know? And, um, so many parents would come up to me, like, and I wasn't supposed to talk to, like, the parents until after it was all done. And not even then was I really supposed to talk to them, but they would say things to me like, now, what would you encourage my daughter to do differently? <laughs> I'm like, well, not wear that dress, for one, you know. Like, my God, this, the amount of money they spend on some of these dresses, unbelievable. And um, the older girls did really interesting things. They did, like, like, when they came to the interview, they were supposed to come to the interview as if it was, like, realistically, like, a job interview or a school interview. And, um, I mean, they knew their shit. They had been doing this for a long time. So, anyway, um, which, if you know anybody that's won pageants, like, especially, like, state or county pageants, they kind of all know each other within the same age range because they've been doing pageants for so long. My friend Brittany, that's like in the director of Miss Ireland Universe now, she like, her first pageant she did was Miss Indiana USA and she won, which is kind of like, you don't ever really hear of that. And um, <laughs> her friend that was kind of like her coach back in the day, this guy, he like has all these funny stories he tells about how when she walked out, she thought she was like a supermodel and she was clumping across the floor and he's like, she had no idea what she was doing. And so anyway, but... I just had the most amazing weekend. It was so fun. It was so like, it was just so family oriented. I loved it. I just thought it was just a cool thing. And these two gay guys that owned the pageant, they were so nice and um, so welcoming to me. And just, you know, the whole thing was just, it was very cool. And um, I, all these people are like, oh, when I tell them the story, they're like, that's a money racket or what I mean. It's a business. I'm like, yeah, of course it's a business. But like these families love it. It's something for them to do. And I don't know. And it was just kind of fun to sit up there and be a judge. And I don't know. But I, that's why I didn't go to my 25-year reunion was because of that weekend. And I'm going to tell you, my friend Jenny still has not let me live that down. She's like, I cannot believe that you went and judged a beauty pageant. I go, it was kind of like a once-in-a-lifetime thing, Jenny. Like, I was never going to get to see full glitz pageant. I mean, I've never been asked to judge that. If you've never been to a full glitz pageant, you have to go just once in your life. I mean, to see it on TV is one thing. To be see, see it in person is another. And, like, I will never forget when we were, like, interviewing, especially these girls that were, like, ages, like, four to eight, they would come in, you know, and they would have, like, you know, they were kids, so they would have, like, missing teeth and stuff, and uh, they just looked like kids, and this woman that I was with, she was, like, she was the one that I was, like, the judge with, like, Courtney was, like, the third judge, and she, like, so we, like, did different timings of things, and so this woman was, like, teaching me how to do stuff, and she knew all of these girls, because she, like, was the judge on, like, she did, the, like, the circuit, right, so she knew all these kids and their parents, and these kids would come in, and she would, like, give this girl, like, tens, and I would be, like, what was that fantastic, what was so fantastic about her, and she's, like, just wait till you see her tomorrow, she's, like, you won't even recognize her, and I'm, like, what do you mean, she's, like, just trust me, remember the name, when she comes in tomorrow, you will not even recognize her, and the girl would come in the next day, and, I mean, she literally looked like a porcelain baby doll, I mean, it was incredible, the transformation, when you talk about makeup beauty gurus um, on YouTube and shit like that, I mean, these mothers and grandmothers, the way they turn these girls into stuff, 
you know? And one of the things I loved about it was you'd see them like running through the hall with their teddy bears and their pajamas, or they would be like all of them in the swimming pool. The swimming pool was packed like the whole weekend, you know? Or families would be eating in the restaurant all together. And the girls, I mean, they weren't looking like that if they weren't like in the beauty pageant, you know? Like they were just like normal kids. I loved it. And I thought, I thought it was real sweet, you know? And real innocent. And I talked to a lot of the parents and I was like, you know, why do you guys decide to do this? And they're like, well, our son has sports and our daughter's not interested in sports. You know, a lot of them would say that. And she loves Miss America and she wants to be a Miss America someday. And so we got her involved in this and we do two a year and, you know, we, the whole family goes and it's a fun weekend. I mean, that was typically the response that I got from the family. She knows that was a family thing. And, you know, it was like what their daughter liked or they would say, you know, my I want my daughter to be well-rounded and she plays sports and she's in art and she's in choir and and they were like four. I mean, these parents were kind of high achievers, a lot of them. And um, a couple of the mothers said to me that like their child didn't have a lot of confidence and it had helped them build confidence and they were better at socializing as a result of it. And um, so it was kind of a cool thing, you know? I'd love to do it again. So if any of you out there have anything to do with pageants, sign me up, let me know. I'd love to judge another pageant. <laughs> So if you don't know the story about pageants with me, I watched pageants ever since I was a really, really little kid with my mom. My mom and I would watch Miss America, Miss Universe, Miss USA, and uh, we watched all of them together. The State Fair Queen pageant, and uh, my mom and I would write down like every state, every country, and then we would rate them like, you know, bathing suit and then like evening gown and we would like pick the ones that were going to win. And I'm pretty good. I can usually pick top six um, to this day. And uh, I mean, I know the states that always win and the states that do well and their histories and stuff like that. I mean, it's hard to like, I mean, it's totally useless knowledge, right? But people are always surprised like when I go to stuff and they're like, if there's like pageant girls there and I start talking, they're like, how do you know so much about this? And I'm like, I mean, I've watched them forever, you know, and I loved it growing up. And I always, and this is the thing, I always wanted to be a judge, like not a judge, I always wanted to be a host of a beauty pageant. I would love that someday to be like the host of like Miss America, well, maybe not Miss America, but like the host of the Miss USA pageant, which is, I think, owned by Donald Trump. But, um, he, I, I think he owns Miss Universe too. But anyway, I would love, love, yeah, he does, because I think there were some countries that said that they weren't going to get involved or something. I don't know. If I had the chance to be a Miss Universe, whoo, or I don't think I would give that up for anything. I don't know. People, you know, stick to their conviction, convictions, though, sometimes. But I watched them all. That's beside the point. I watched them all back in the day, and um, I had the Vanessa Williams Miss America paper dolls. Uh, I had them in my basement. I ended up giving them to my friend that's like obsessed with beauty pageants. It's really weird because like I have a lot of friends that are Miss USA and then I have a lot of friends that are Miss America. Not Miss, they were the Miss America. Although we are friends with Katie Stam from Seymour, Indiana, who it was Miss America. And uh, now her last name is Irk, but um, super nice. Oh my God. And she walks in a room, let me just tell you, okay? Because I've, like, done a lot of, like... So, Alex, one of the things that we do is for the Miss America pageant, we've been asked to do mock interviews with the girls that are going to Miss America because of our website. And so, we sit in a room with, like, six other people, and we just fire questions at them. And you can ask them anything, because at Miss America, they could be asked anything. Political, entertainment-wise, anything that's, you know, current events... You know, anything in the world, they can ask them. And so they have to be, like, you know, just really ready to answer and give good responses and, you know, kind of be middle of the road to some degree. And so we help doing those mock interviews. Well, Katie, we started doing it the year after Katie won. And uh, so that's how we met Katie. And, I mean, she walks in a room and she is gorgeous. I mean, if you guys have not seen Katie uh, Stam Irk, look her up. She is very unique looking. She has dark, dark, dark hair. And she's very petite. And um, she, she sang opera, I think, for Miss America. She's just gorgeous. And just so much fun, too. And so, anyway, we started doing that. And, uh, but, like, 
of all the people that I know, it's split. Like, my, I have like three friends that were like Miss USA winners, Indiana USA. Brittany was Miss Six in the Miss USA pageant. Um, and then I have a couple friends of mine that were Miss Indiana Americas, and they kind of never the twain shall meet. So the saying goes like this. I know there's like two or three of you out there that are like real into pageants and this conversation is pissing you off probably because you're like, yep, that's how I feel. And you don't, you stay one side or the other. And um, so this is what they say. This is so bad. Um, that Miss America is the girl next door and Miss USA is the girl you wish lived next door. <laughs> I mean, they are a little sexier than Miss USA's, but um and Miss America also has talent. I don't think Miss USA has talent. I'm almost positive it doesn't. Um, and then I actually met a couple years ago this girl that had, I can't remember what it's called. If you know, leave it in the comment section below. But it's like where you win all three. I think it's where you win, yes, you win all three. Miss Teen USA, because I don't think there's a Miss Teen America. There might be, if there is, I'm wrong. But it's either one or the other. I think it's like Miss Teen USA, Miss, then, then your state. So you'd be Miss Teen Indiana, Miss Indiana, and then Miss America, Miss Indiana America. Like if you hold three, it's called something. Um, both Brittany and Courtney were Miss Teen Indiana USA and Miss Indiana USA. Um, and I think that's pretty common. I don't know what the third thing is that's called that. It's like a really big deal. Like very few people have had three titles. Um, but you know what's interesting is like to be to have a position like that. If you're smart with it, I mean, it is really a strong networking. You know, I don't know. Like I've, I've just always been really impressed with how they've handled themselves and. They're very professional and they've used it as like a networking source to like get great jobs and do great things and you know. It's been kind of cool that indirectly I've gotten to kind of like live my fantasy of like getting close to the pageants a little bit, you know, because I would love to be like a host of Miss USA or even a judge. I was so jealous a couple years ago when Perez Hilton was on there. I can't believe they had him as a judge on there, but um, and I think we're kind of going away from pageants a little bit, you know, like when I went and did the thing with Courtney, she was like, you know, they, they it wasn't full, like it wasn't sold out. And I remember she, she said to me, she goes, I can remember like she, cause she grew up, um, being in beauty pageants actually, well, she said, I'll tell you this part for, she said, um, I can remember when I was growing up, these things were packed and we did them every weekend, my mom and I. And uh, so when I met Courtney, I, we were talking about beauty pageants, obviously, because that's how I met her. And um, she said, um, I met Courtney the night that she won Miss Indiana USA, that Miss, that Brittany was giving the crown to her was the night that I met Courtney. So, and then Courtney was at our wedding as well. Brittany, was, Brittany married us and Courtney was at our wedding. But anyway, um, so, when I met her, I, I told her, I said, oh my God, I'm so obsessed. I even saw this documentary called Living Dolls and it was about this like Swan Bruner and this all these people in there, like these other names that I knew that I probably shouldn't say right now, <clears throat> even though it was a documentary on HBO and you can still go watch it. And she knew everything about it. She knew where they were and what had happened and all this kind of stuff. And if you, if you haven't seen this movie, there's this girl in it and her name is Swan Bruner. And the last time I talked about this on a document, on a the vlog, Somebody went, like, and researched all this shit about her. And leave the girl alone. Please don't do that. I already know where she's at and stuff like that because somebody sent it all to me. But So, in the, doc in the documentary, she's a beautiful little girl and just real whippersnapper. She's hilarious. And, uh, but her mom dies. Like, when it's over, they say something about that Swan's mother died. And so, then I, like, she's, like, the focal point of the documentary. I went and like Google searched what happened to her and there was like no information. All the information was is that her mom died and then like her grandparents died and then she went and lived with an aunt or uncle somewhere. Nobody knew whatever happened to her again. Like you never knew, right? 
And everybody wanted to know what had happened to this swan girl because she was like the focal point of this, you know, documentary. So I read forums and shit about this girl and it was so weird. There were like, there was like one picture of her like getting off a plane and she was kind of like turning backwards and all this kind of stuff. And um, I think now she's kind of come out a little bit as like, you know, more of a public figure and she has like social media and stuff. But back then she didn't and she wanted to be very, very private. And um, I'm all for letting people have their privacy if they want it. But it's interesting when you go back and what, go watch it. It's on HBO or it's on uh, YouTube, Living Dolls. And there's like five, 10 minute segments. I watched it all one night and I was like, oh my God, this is just as fantastic as it was when I watched it 20 years ago. <laughs> and it's, I mean, it seriously is such, just as good as it was then. I broke my straw and I literally have nothing left in this cup anyway. So I don't know why I'm even still trying to drink it, but. tastes good anymore. <sighs> there was another documentary. Um, I don't think it was Living Dolls. I can't remember which one it was called. But it was really sad too. And it was about this girl and she had this like, oh, I can't remember what the disease is that she called, but she had a hard time breathing and she had one of those machines she had to hook herself up to every night. Her name was Jenny, and she just loved it. She loved everything about it, and her and her mom were hilarious, and they would go in these hotel rooms and get, like, takeout, and they'd be eating, like, chicken wings and fries and stuff, and she would, like, be, like, pro amming in the room, and I remember why I watched that one over and over and over again, and it said at the end of it, it said that she had passed away, too. I thought, God, it's so sad, you know? She all, she just wanted to be, get some attention, be loved, you know? It was such a cool, it was such a cool piece of this girl. And they were so pissed because they didn't, that wasn't Living Dolls because that was a different one because <laughs> it was always, Tani and I started joking about it because back in the day, there was like this woman that owned it, the pageant, it was called like the Sweetheart something or something, I don't know. Rosa, Texas or something, but she like owned this pageant and, and like all these kids that like when the, their mothers like did special favors for this woman, like they were always the ones that won. It was also totally rigged, right? Jenny Lewis, I think is, I don't know how I know that name. Like this is where I have like memory of just the stupidest shit that I don't need to know. But anyway, um, so, <laughs> They like tried everything. Like they were so nice. The mom was like constantly smoking cigarettes. It was so funny. But anyway, the woman that ran the pageant, like her assistant who, she had like three kids and they were all in the pageants. And she was like this woman's assistant and she worked until like four, she had like two jobs to pay for the pageant and all the, all the different pageants they went to and all the different gowns. This is back in the day of that kind of shit. Like how it really, you know, and, uh, toddlers and tiaras. And she, uh, like, there was this one scene when they go to Walmart at, like, 3 in the morning because they need pantyhose and stuff like this. And my ex and Tanya and I used to get laughing so hard because I felt like I knew so many people that were just like that, going to Walmart at 3 o'clock and weren't like us, right? But we weren't getting... So every time Tanya and I, still to this day, when we go to uh, Walmart real late at night, I'm like, uh, do you need any pantyhose or nail polish for the pageant? I always ask her that. So anyway, but, you know, this, uh, this Jenny's mom was so pissed because they paid all this money for this pageant. And then at the end of it, <laughs> the woman that's the assistant, it was so rigged. Her kids all won. They all won big cash prizes and stuff. <clears throat> you know, those glued together dollar bills. They really do do that though. But anyway, she was like, they were all like, oh my God, thank you so much. They're all singing, sitting around and um, this lady that owned the pageant, how much they loved her, and that thing, and that's what friends are for, and they all of them had their trophies and stuff. And like the only person out of like the 100 girls that entered this thing that didn't win anything was this like 13, 14 year old Jenny, because they told her that she, sh uh, mom like, went and asked for the judges score sheets, and they said, well, we don't accept pro amming. And she got real shitty about it. She's like in the hotel room and she's like, this pageant's rigged. We're never doing another one of Susie's pageants again, ever. 
and you could tell her to go fuck off. <laughs> it was hilarious. And then Jenny girl's like, Mom, let's just go home. Come on, I just want to go home. And she's like, Yeah, you could tell her to shove it. And this pageant's a joke. And the mom's just going on and on and on. And then to find out the girl dies in the end, it was just so sad. I guess it's kind of like the reality of life, but. You guys, I feel like that is such a piece, like a, such a huge piece of the pie, I was gonna say. Such a huge percentage of my life is just like useless, what is the time limit on there I'm at, okay. I just feel like it's just such useless TV shows and movies and documentaries I've watched. I've watched so many documentaries that I'm just like, who'd care, you know? <laughs> old TV shows that I used to watch and everything. It's funny, kind of. <laughs> you know I'm going to look that up like later or tomorrow or something. I'm going to look up that, whatever that documentary was. It's on YouTube too because I've looked it up. The Living Dolls one was an, an investigative report. I'm probably thinking of that because I was talking in my main video about the Herb Baumeister documentary that was on that show too. That's probably what triggered my mind thinking about Living Dolls. But the other one was an HBO special and I can't remember what it was called. It wasn't Living Dolls on HBO, it was called, uh... damn it, I don't remember what it was called. Go find it though, I'll talk about it. If I figure out what it is, I'll link it below. You guys know I'm horrible about the linking it below, but I'll go link it below if I remember what it is. But if you guys can't, you should go try to find it out. HBO special about beauty pageants. I'll pull in here in just a second. I swear to God, if I saw the title of it, I would know in a heartbeat if it was if that's what it was or not. Um, so I'll turn around and I'll pull in here and look it up. But um, God, it was fantastic. I wanna see it again now. I'm gonna pull in right here. I can't even wait. I gotta know. Are you guys ever like that? God, thank God for the Google. I mean, you know what I mean. Thank God for the Google. Okay. HBO special. Special. Oh, damn it, why can't I type to About beauty pageants. Oh, it says it's Living Dolls. Is anybody coming? Damn it, how am I gonna find out what that is? That other documentary special. Cause it was like on, then it would have been the one that was on A&E. Unless it was the Living Dolls one, but it's not the same one because that one's mostly about Swan. I gotta find out what it's called. But I just looked it up and it's on YouTube, Living Dolls. You can find that one. That's the one about Swan Bruner. That one's really interesting. When you watch it, the gay guys that are the coaches that live in some gorgeous house out in the middle of nowhere, Georgia or something, they aren't together anymore. It like devastated me. I asked Courtney, I was like, what happened to these people that were in this? And she's like, well, the girl doesn't do beauty pageants anymore and she's like 30. <laughs> and she's like, I mean, of course, it's been forever since the show was on. They're, they have a daughter, her name's Leslie. And she's like, no, she doesn't do beauty pageants anymore, but she's really nice. And I talk to her every once in a while. And then she's like, but they broke up a long time ago. She's like, they're not together anymore. I'm like, they're not? I'm devastated. The dads aren't together anymore, this gay couple. The one that shows the little girls how to walk and heels. <laughs> 
Why do I get such weird attachments to people in documentaries that I don't even know and won't ever know? Isn't that so weird? What is that about? Like, Peter, what is wrong with you? I'm gonna pull in here and I'm gonna find what this stupid documentary is called. Friends of friends forever. Friends, da da da. <laughs> it's not called Friends or Friends Forever. Um, hold on just a second. <laughs> you guys are like, we really don't care that much. Yes, you do. When you see it, trust me, you're going to care. Okay. Baby. Beauty. Pageant. Documentaries. Did you guys ever watch um, that show? Uh, Kim, Kim of Queens. Oh my god, I love that show so much. Baby Beauty Queens, that's not what it was called. Here it is, Living Dolls, Living Dolls, Living Dolls. PB. What is this? Pretty babies. I have never seen this. Oh my god. Painted babies. Painted babies at seven. I am watching that. I have never heard of that before. Oh my god. Painted babies. I found another one. I'm going to have to watch it. Thank you, Lindsay Marie, for posting this. Um... Here, let's read what this woman wrote in here. She said, Current obsession, child beauty pageant of documentaries. Lately, I've been fascinated with various documentaries on child... Living Dolls is listed on here. Okay. Talks about Swan Brunner, Leslie. It doesn't talk about Jenny. So that must not be the Jenny one. Great A. Painted Babies. Okay, I'm going to watch that one. Grade B. Little Beauties, Ultimate Kitty Down, Showtown. Alina, who's obsessed with boobies. Kennedy, the only black girl. Okay, maybe this is it. Oh, I think that's like a newer one, because I can remember that. See, somebody posted on here in 2008. I'm dying for them to make a sequel to Living Dolls. I'd love to see what Swan's like now, but I'm fascinated scared to see what all those years in the pageant circuit have done to Leslie. She's not on the pageant circuit anymore. Jenny, I'm gonna put... Um, pageant. I cannot believe I can't find this documentary <gasps> Jenny Foster oh my god I just found it A&E child beauty pageant special update oh it's the end of it it's really sad it's the end of it where they find they say that she died. Does it say what the show was? Baby Beauty Queens is what it was called. She had cystic fibrosis, a terminal disease. Jenny loved page pageants and was very sweet, funny, and loved by her family. Her mother said Jenny was her best friend. Jenny died not long after the documentary was released. She was only 14 years old. Her mother now has a seven-year-old girl named Cassidy. That was in 2009. Well, that makes me cry. I remember watching her in that and like... I don't know, it's just weird. I get like such weird attachments to like people that I, you know, see in like documentaries that I never meet. And if her mom's out there somewhere, if anybody knows her mom, tell her I said hi. And that her daughter made me happy watching that documentary. And uh... <laughs> God, I'm such a weirdo, aren't I? <laughs> I 
mean, I could have Tanya in the car right now, and I'd be like, do you remember Jenny? From she's like, oh my God, Jenny, that did pro am, and she would do this in the room. We don't really ever know who we're touching out there, you know, like whose life we're affecting in a positive way. I think, even if it's just something small like that. Oh my God, I cannot believe that I am like at the, this camera is about to shut off here any second because I'm at 20, 29 minutes and 40 seconds. So I'm just going to let it shut off and then I'll come right back in like two and two, two and two and two and I was letting the camera cool for a second so it wouldn't just shut off, but I'm not going to go probably on for much longer anyway because I think I'm at like 50 minutes, but I was sitting here thinking as the camera was cooling down, I was like, think about all these documentaries, you know, like Paris is Burning was like this huge documentary for me that I watched and uh, I don't know, just like those people, like I can remember looking them up and it was like ben the, Benji Ninja was like the only one that was still alive and you know, even he passed away a couple years ago and <clears throat> Then I remember, like, last summer I watched that Strike a Pose about all of Madonna's dancers. And, you know, at the time that I watched Truth or Dare, the documentary that she put out years and years and years ago, like, those dancers had such an impact on my life. You know, they were, like, my age at the time that I was, like, going out to bars and I was out. And uh, I don't know, like, for me, in some kind of weird way, like, their life was, like, a role model of being comfortable in my own skin. And uh, I've always loved documentaries, you know, always. And um, like that Queen of Versace, or the Queen of Versace, um, is that what it's called? What's that called? The, you know, I'm talking about the woman who her, her husband owned the timeshares. What's that? Just, oh, the Queen of Versailles. And. Um, then this documentary called Stevie about this guy that follows up with his uh, foster brother or mentor or something like that, the little brother after like 20 years to see where he's at. And all these documentaries that I've watched, you know, The Keepers on Netflix, Making a Murderer, you know, all of these documentaries that are like are 10 times more interesting to me than watching fictional movies. And you get to see these people's lives, but then it's weird because it's like, once you turn it off, those people's lives keep on going on. You know, just this year I watched that show, Gone, The Forgotten Women of Ohio. And you know, that investigation is still going on as we speak, like right now, you know, and there's no conclusive evidence to what happened. And with fictional movies, we stop them. <clears throat> It's weird. I was having a conversation with Alex and I said, you know, like, <laughs> this is such a weird conversation, but I said, you know, like if something happened to me, like I would want you to like make a statement on my channels, you know? And he was like, what do you mean? And I was like, well, I wouldn't want you just to shut my channels down or just, just, you know, I would want you to leave the videos up there forever, <clears throat> you know, but I would want you to like go on there and make some statement about how much this meant to me, you know? That how much everybody's had impact in my life. I mean, he said, don't you think that most of those people know that? And I said, I don't know. I said, I talked to some of them, you know, via Twitter or whatever. I said, but now I have a hard time keeping up with all the social media stuff and I wish I could do a better job. And So to say that a lot on here. I used to talk about how much you guys mean to me, you know, for watching my vlogs and being interested in my boring little stupid lives and things that I do with my dogs or talking about a date with my husband or marriage counseling or planning a trip or driving around and telling some foolish story that I haven't thought about in 20 years, you know. I, I, I just think it's, it's very cool, you know that you allow me to do this, that you allow me into your homes and into your lives and into your routine. And I feel very blessed. And um, if I've learned anything, <clears throat> you know, in the last two months from keeping a gratitude journal every day, 
I have learned that my life is very, very full. And um, I'm not ready to go. I have a lot of things I still want to do and experience on this planet. But if I did, I think that it would be easy for me to say that I had had a very full life. And I was entertained by some amazing people in my life. And um, and this is a huge part of that. You know, I've... I think without you guys knowing it, you know, I, I get comments and people are like, I wish we could turn... Uh, it just stopped again. It just stopped again. So I'm just going to try to wrap this up really quick. Anyway, I just want to thank you guys. You know, I... I don't think it's any mystery that I spend the majority of my time making videos for my channels and and I love it. I would not do it unless I did unless I loved it. I love everything about it and um, I feel it's the joy in my life that I didn't even know would be there someday and I just kind of lucked into it, you know, and <clears throat> by making my booktube videos and channel and didn't have any clue where that would end up and now look at me now you know and I, I make a vlog every night where I drive around or show you parts of my life and I love it and uh, thank you so much for being part of that and uh, I love you guys and I hope you're having an amazing weekend bye